Five years ago, I knew almost nothing about software engineering. Now here I am working as software engineer at Twitter five years later. It's been an amazing experience and one that I have been loving sharing with all of you on my YouTube channel. But for those of you who are watching, many of you are just wondering, how can I get into software engineering? How can I learn to code? Today, we're gonna to talk about how you can start learning to code and how you can get your first job as a software engineer even today. Now, the first thing that you want to evaluate before we think about do you even want to learn to code is, is there a market for it? Yes, obviously, there is still a market for it. There is a huge demand for engineers, one that has grown even more tremendously over the last two years than in recent years before that. Software engineering is an amazing career path, one that is much easier to get into than other forms of engineering, and one that can have a lot of longevity if you plan your career correctly. So in the current market, this is May of 2022, which is to say that there is a lot of uncertainty going on. In the last two years, we had more jobs popping up than ever before. We had more candidates applying than ever before. And in some cases, some of the companies I worked at, recruiters were having a hard time finding candidates who wanted to apply or even stick through the entire interview process because they were getting so many more offers than they could handle. Now, things are slowing down a little bit, at least temporarily, but does that mean that it's a permanent shift in the other direction? Absolutely not. If anything, this is probably one of the better times to learn how to be a software engineer because by the time you're done going through whatever education course you choose, the economy hopefully will have made some moves and we'll be at a point where companies are hiring again. And that brings us to our next topic, which is how do you learn to code? Now, when I started five years ago, I happened to know a friend who went through a code school who could basically tell me that it was a good experience and he got a job. That was enough proof for me to follow in the same steps that he did. Now, five years later, I don't know if I can still recommend the same code school that I went to. I'm sure that it's still a good education and there are good people working there, but I know that even when I graduated, the graduation numbers were slightly less than accurate. I think that the numbers were told to be somewhere around 70 to 80% of people got jobs. I think in reality, the number was like 50. And the code school by no means tried to cover that up. They were very honest about the fact that numbers were lower than expected, but it feels like uh, there's still a lot of promise for a job that may not actually be there for you. Um, and that's just because there's so much more competition now than there used to be. I've talked to several friends who are hiring at this point, and they say that it's not really a good time to be a boot camp graduate. Now, that isn't to say that you can't get a job, but it's going to be much harder for you to get a job when you're also competing with the number of people who are coming out of four-year degrees and other longer-term education programs. That being said, when I was learning five years ago to be a software engineer, I didn't have time for a two or four year degree. I went through a three month program and found a job three months later. That was a godsend for me because I didn't have the time or money to, to do that. I had to make a change and I had to do it fast. And at the end of the day, this, that's probably the thing that gets in the way of most people actually completing the transition into a career as software engineer is the drive to get that first job. Because once you get that first job and you're in, you can basically have a career out of that just if you put enough time and you will eventually move on to bigger and better opportunities. But if you don't have that first job, if you don't have the work experience, it's not gonna happen. Now that isn't to say that I wouldn't pick a boot camp today, but there are some interesting alternatives that didn't exist when I went. So for instance, UC Berkeley has an extension program. A friend of mine actually just enrolled in this program. Rather than being a 12 week course, it is a six month course where they teach you a lot more and give you a lot more time to explore and become comfortable with the fundamentals and concepts of computer science. Things that I kind of glossed over, committed to memory enough to pass interviews, and now five years later have learned a lot more about, but have done so on the job. And there's not always going to be room to do that. I think that the time that I got in was just at the tail end of the sort of gold rush of being able to go to a boot camp and get a job. At this point, I see a lot of boot camp grads having a much harder time getting their first job. And then there's also the other path that you consider, which is being self-taught. Realistically, if you are already teaching yourself how to code and you're watching this video, it's possible that you are not going to consider yourself self-motivated. I certainly wasn't. I, I couldn't keep myself motivated without some kind of external accountability factor. So having the accountability of a code school, teachers, co-students, etc., kept me more accountable to myself and put more pressure on myself to finish and complete my work because I was doing it with other people. It's kind of like learning a language. You have to talk to other people in that language in order to really commit it to memory in a short amount of time. And software engineering really is very similar in that vein. So if you're watching this video and you're wondering if you should self-teach yourself, 
Chances are you shouldn't. You probably need some accountability in your life to make sure that you get through like I did. Um, I do have a few friends who are self-taught and they use some resources. FreeCodeCamp.org is a really great resource. I know several self-taught engineers who went through it. Um, I myself have not used it, but I've seen some of their projects and it's very impressive what they make working over there. But you have to remember, if you can't stay motivated, you're not ultimately gonna push yourself through and you're not gonna get that job. So I still recommend boot camps and colleges over self-taught for most people. But hey, maybe you're one of the people who is able to stay self-motivated. And to that, I give you a thumbs up, kudos. And then now let's also talk about what part of the technology stack you should focus on. Very early on, you'll learn that there's sort of this divide between front end and back end in software engineering. And then there's also this area in the middle called full stack that people like to keep themselves in. What I'll say is, Full stack is something that you should dabble your feet in in the beginning. If you're a back-end engineer, you should have some idea of how the front-end works. If you're a front-end engineer, you should have some idea of how the back-end works, at least in relationship to the work you're doing. But I think being a full stack engineer in general typically kind of makes you a half as good back-end engineer and a half as good front-end engineer. And there are very few companies, mostly startups, very small startups, that value that. And even then, those startups want someone who can do a lot more with a lot less because they're resource constrained. They don't have as much money to pay for as many engineers. More than likely, you'll probably end up in a company that's medium to large size. So 100 to 150 employees, probably 20 to 40 people in the engineering department uh, or more. And to that point, I think you are much better off having a focus in either front end or back end because companies are structured this way where work comes down a pipeline to back end engineers to front end engineers. And if you can make yourself more desirable to fitting into that structure, then you will be a much more valuable candidate to those companies. That being said, I am a front end engineer. I really like what I do. I've always liked front end and I've always had a lot of interest for websites specifically because I was a marketing major in college and I really like how branding and marketing and the sort of front page of a company ties to their brand identity. But you may not feel that way. You may prefer just kind of getting into code and you may find that you enjoy things like scripting and uh, database queries and setting up APIs to each their own. I will say this, it does feel like we've always had fewer backend engineers than we would like at the companies that I've worked at. I've worked at four now, and it has always felt like we've had a lot of front engineers, but not enough really talented ones. So take that with a grain of salt. Uh, and I think ultimately you should just choose whatever you're more drawn to, because if you're more interested, you'll do a better job. Finally, a few resources that I think are really interesting when you're getting started. I think that there are still a lot of great websites that will let you dabble with code before you decide to make a full commitment. Codecademy is the one that I used when I was starting out to get an idea of whether or not I really wanted to do this. It turns out I really enjoyed it and had a lot of fun with it, so I stuck with it. I have sent multiple friends to Codecademy and they have not made it through and decided that it wasn't for them. And I think that if you can't make it through the very basics of Codecademy, this probably isn't a career for you. And then one final piece of advice, the thing that I think is most important is that when you make a decision, you have to commit to it and move quickly. And especially once you get your first job as a software engineer, don't get comfortable. You need to get uncomfortable because you're gonna still be learning so much once you become a software engineer because working as a software engineer is very different from learning your first how to code projects. And I have a video right here about quitting that you can check out that will give you some advice on how you can make the best of your software engineering career. Thanks so much for watching. If you wanna see more videos like this, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, leave a comment down below, and I'll see you in the next one.